This is an achieve level exemplar for 2.10, conduct an experiment to investigate a situation using statistical methods. You're going to want to follow along this video and get your whole report to an achievement level before you attempt to work at merit or excellence. It's very important you present an entire package at the achieve level um, simply because a lot of people work for excellence miss something small in the achieve and uh, do a lot of work to fail so let's make sure we cover the basics together and then if you want you can watch part two of this video series to score higher your marking scheme in the achieve column should look almost exactly like this all you have to do all you have to do is really make sure that you check all the requirements to achieve and you should be sweet if you follow along with this video as well so first of all, what's happening here, we're going to have to conduct an experiment and we're going to have to show evidence of having used the investigation process. So this is referring to the PPDAC. Below this video, there's a link to a file, which is a template for every item you need to achieve this standard. So I highly recommend that you download that um, doc file and use that template to ensure you include each item required to achieve this standard. We'll open up the exemplar that I've made and as you can see I have a proper title and the focus of my investigation that I did was uh, checking out if people's heart rate changes when they see others in danger. So here's my purpose and I'm really gonna make sure this is gonna line up with the marking scheme. So for Achieve, an investigative question is posed about the experimental situation. And let's check and see if I've done that. This investigation will explore if watching a video of near-death experiences has an effect on people's heart rates. And here's my question, very important to pose a question when watching a video of near-death experiences, do viewers experience a change in their heart rate? So there's, there's an achieve level purpose, and we'll move on to the plan. So next is the plan, and I'm going to immediately go to the marking scheme provided. And we need to show evidence that the experiment was planned. Appropriate variables and measures are identified and the data collection and recording method is explained. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do this bit first. We're gonna uh, identify appropriate variables and measures. All right, so here's my plan. The subjects are, for this experiment, 40 people will be used by combining two math classes. The ages of the participants vary between 14 and 17 years old and is approximately an even mix of boys and girls. Our control. Students are taught to measure their heart rate. When all participants understand how to measure their heart rate, students measure their own heart rate over 10 seconds. The students record the result on a piece of paper. Students also record if they are male or female on their data recording sheet. Now, I just want to point out that we need to also identify data collection and recording methods. So I've taken care of that quite nicely uh, in the control, what the students are actually doing and how they record the results after the control. Now I have my treatment. It's very important, by the way, to use this terminology of control and treatment, okay, and your subject under study. So let's take a look at the treatment. Students will all watch at the same time a video of near-death experiences. Immediately after the video is completed, students are asked to measure their heart rate over 10 seconds. Students record the result and hand in their data. Uh, I've provided a link to the video if any of the viewers want to check that out. There's going to be a link in the description box of this video. Now, I make it really clear what I'm going to do with the data because the marking scheme asks me to do that. So I explain further, data is compiled in a spreadsheet and imported into NZ Grapher. 
All right, and that's a website that we're going to use to generate our graphs. I'm going to explain here as part of my plan what I'm going to do with the data. A dot plot and an and overlaying box plot will be produced as well as a paired experiment dot plot. All right, so the data will then be analyzed and then conclusions will be made. So that brings us to the data and analysis part. Now, to generate both graphs that you need in this study, you're going to actually have to have two separate spreadsheets. It's a little bit annoying, but please keep in mind NZ Grapher does a lot of work for you, and overall, you're saving a lot of time by using it. So, let's make our paired comparison graph first. And the way you want to organize your spreadsheet is by having a column for resting heart rate and a column for the treatment heart rate. And each individual subject's data lines up across. So you're going to want to download this as a CSV file. And once you've done that, you go to Grapher, you're going to choose a file, you're going to want to choose that file you just saved <clears throat> and now we can choose paired experiment dot plot now keep in mind this graph only applies if you've used the same group of people for the control and the treatment data gathering so let's go ahead and choose that variable one will be resting heart rate variable two will be the treatment heart rate and <clears throat> To get the arrows, we click on arrows. There we go. Get some summary stats, and that's enough. So, you're going to want an appropriate title here, update that graph, and we can copy this image, simply paste that into your project. And that's the one graph that we need. The other graph that we need is just a regular box plot for both control and treatment groups. And I'll show you what the spreadsheet needs to look like to get a nice set of box plots that line up perfectly on the same image. Here's the exact same data, but as you can see, I have a column here that identifies the heart rate values is resting heart rate or treatment heart rate. Now, it's really important that you have for each value in your heart rate column, each one needs either a title on the controller treatment column as a resting heart rate or a treatment heart rate. So basically, what I did was I copied all of this data and pasted it onto the bottom here and relabeled all these. Okay, all of these are resting heart rates. So I relabeled all those as resting heart rates. And as you can see on the actual spreadsheet I'm going to use, I wrote in treatment heart rate here and pasted that into all the cells beside the treatment heart rate data. So once we have that, we can, uh, again, download the CSV file, and then in Grapher, upload the CSV file, and there it is. Now I can choose a dot plot, and the variable one is going to be heart rate, and we're going to split that up based on whether that was control or treatment heart rate. There's the two box plots, the two dot plots. Let's get the summaries and box plots on the graph. And we're going to copy this. Go ahead and put it into our exemplar. So that's the data section completed. We're going to go into, uh, into the analysis. So we've got our graphs and we're going to go ahead and do the analysis. Now, it's really important that you realize your analysis should focus on answering the purpose of the experiment or the question 
And your analysis should be comparative. You want to compare the control group to the treatment group or the control results to the treatment results. So you do want to make each analysis statement in a comparative fashion. So let's go and check with the marking scheme for the standard and we'll get that opened up. <clears throat> so for your analysis, your marking scheme at the achieve level should look a lot like this and we're going to need to make in total five observations and we're going to start with center. <clears throat> now notice for each criteria in the marking scheme I have a separate heading. That makes it a lot easier to mark. Uh, your instructor will enjoy that and you will tend to score higher if you have proper section headings for all the uh, criteria to achieve. So let's talk about the center. <clears throat> Clearly the median drops by one beat per 10 seconds. And that's what I talk about here. The control medium, the control median heart rate is higher than the treatment group median. The median for the control is 14 beats per 10 seconds. Okay, notice I have complete units here. And the median for the treatment is 13 beats per 10 seconds. Okay, so there's an achieve level uh, observation made regarding the center. Now talking about the spread, the control heart rate is spread over a wider range than the treatment heart rate. So you can see, mostly because of this value right here, uh, the control heart rate range is spread out more than the treatment heart rate range. And that's the observation I make here regarding spread. <clears throat> okay, the control heart rates were measured between 9 and 22 beats per 10 seconds, and the treatment heart rates were measured between 9 and 18 beats per 10 seconds. Okay, that's an achieved level observation for spread. The shape, the control heart rate has a mode of 14 beats per 10 seconds. That's right here. And the shape is skewed right. You can see that to the right side there's this tail, so that's causing a right skew. Um, now, I'm going to immediately talk about the shape of the treatment heart rate. Uh, has two modes, the main one being at 12, and there's one at 15 here. <clears throat> okay. So I'll go on and say that uh, this is a bimodal uh, shaped distribution. Here we go. Uh, we talk about some unusual features here. One student had an abnormally high resting heart rate of 22 beats per second. So we're making that observation, telling the marker that, yeah, we spotted this unusual data point, and that's fine for achieve. So let's go on to analyze the paired comparison chart here. And the main thing you're going to want to report here are proportions of change. So because there's overlap, you don't actually get the full picture from this graph. Actually, And you actually have to go back to the data set to determine that 11 out of 40 students had the same heart rate. All right. If you don't know how to get this percentage, I just simply put into my calculator 11 divided by 40 and then you multiply that result by 100 to get 27.5%. Okay. Again, from the raw data itself, I had to count up that 18 out of 40 students experienced an increased heart rate. And from the raw data, I counted up that 11 out of 40 students experienced a decreased heart rate. Okay, so that takes care of the proportions of change aspect of the criteria to achieve. Uh, scrolling down to see the next item, that's the end of the standard here for the conclusion. So findings are communicated in a conclusion. 
Now, it's always a service to the reader to remind them what the point was. Okay, you should get into the habit of doing this uh, at the start of any conclusion that you write for any standard. Uh, it sets up a nice discussion for the conclusion that's easy to read and easy to follow. So let's see how I conclude this. You need to answer the question. So the purpose was to see if watching a video of near-death experiments, experiment, not experiments, but experiences, causes a change in the heart rate of the viewer. So my answer to the problem was, after doing this investigation, we can conclude that the results indicate that the response to watching a video of near-death experiment, change that again, experiences, differs from person to person. So we have three options, either the heart rate increased, either the, or the heart rate stayed the same, or the heart rate decreased. So I'm gonna report those proportions. 27.5% of the people calmed down, which was indicated by the lowering of heart rate, from the treatment. 27.5% of the people were not affected, indicated by no change in heart rate, and 45% of the people did experience a change in heart rate, and we'll be clear about this, from the treatment. <clears throat> and I'll conclude this by saying, almost half of the subjects experienced an increased heart rate from watching near-death experiences, indicating that a lot of people do indeed react physiologically to seeing other people almost dying okay and that's the project at an achieve level there's some elements in here that would be working at merit but it's this project as it stands is not going to score any higher than achieve so i highly recommend you do your report entirely to an achieve level take a break and then watch part two of this series to see how you can score merit and excellence on 91265 Thanks for watching.